Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us. So, death penalty. Imam, who's uh, very good friends with Pope Francis, he debunks the encyclical Fratelli Tutti. Pope Francis, his abrogation of the death penalty and his encyclical Fratelli Tutti is being blown sky high by his chief dialogue partner, Grand Imam Ahmed al Tayyib, who, in accordance with Islamic jurisprudence, supports the execution of apostates from Islam. If you look at this article, there's a picture of five Muslims hanging by their neck in public. There's a public hanging there right above freshly dug graves in a Muslim country, obviously a Sharia law country. Probably Catholics or Protestants. Uh, Pope Francis said, Today we state clearly that the death penalty is inadmissible and the church is firmly committed to calling for its abolition worldwide. That's what Pope Francis said in his latest encyclical, which contradicts scripture and 2,000 years of sacred tradition. But El Taib, this, this Islam imam, who's named five times in the encyclical, and he's upheld as Pope Francis's inspiration in Fratelli Tutti, which means all brothers. In other words, we're calling Muslims our brothers now, okay? It tra it, this trash, he trashes, El Taib trashes Pope Francis's declaration stating the following quote, the four schools of Islamic law all concur that apostasy is a crime, that an apostate should be asked to repent, and that if he does not, he should be killed. Close quote. And he also said in a, in a 2016 Arabic interview, he said, contemporary jurisprudence concur, and so does ancient jurisprudence. This is Islamic jurisprudence, that apostasy is a crime. Close quote. And then he said, al Taib said, we should be aware that the concepts of human rights are full of ticking time bombs. So the Grand Imam warned labeling apostasy high treason and a rebellion both against religion and what is held sacrosanct by society. al Taib cites the exception of the Hanafi school, which legislates that a female apostate should not be killed. He explains the exception is, is because it is inconceivable that a woman would rebel against her community. Paul, here's what's, what's, what's funny about all this is that Pope Francis is holding out El Taib as a, as a brother, as a model Muslim. And he's saying, hey, we got to abolish, uh, we got to abolish the death penalty. And El Taib contradicts him immediately with his uh, interviews, with his statements. And so Pope Francis is calling him a model Muslim and uh, calling him my brother. And Al Taib is basically completely dismissing and disregarding his teaching on the death penalty, saying, uh, nope, not here in Islam. It's uh, it's part of our doctrine. And so, uh, yeah, this is a m more confusion from the top, Paul. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> let's face it. Uh, Islam does not tolerate other religions, period. Nope. Uh, you, can, you go to any... Muslim country where Sharia law is the law of the land. And guess what? You're not free to worship and practice your religion. No. Okay. And uh, you know what, Jess, uh, with the exception that they have a false religion um, in concept, I, 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 I like it. You know what I mean? Listen, there is only one God. Yeah. And when you allow you know, false religions to, uh, you know, to come in and, and spread their ideas, uh, souls are being lost. And this is what the true religion, by the way, not, not yeah. you know, like I said, in concept, you know, they're right. Uh, that's why, um, you know, during the Reformation, a lot of Bibles were burned. Why? Well, because they, they, a lot of them contained errors and things like that. And you're like, well, why are they burning mm -hmm. Bibles? Well, uh, because uh, the truth cannot be compromised in any way, shape, or form. So uh, in concept, I, I, I agree with them. Uh, now, a lot of people might listen to that and, and, and say, wow, that's, that's a really extreme position. But really, no, it's not. That's right. Go, go ahead and continue where it says only the Pope confused. Sure. Uh Church militants, uh, Arabic translator, who is himself an apostate, 
as to say he has left the faith, uh, you know, in Islam, living in fear of the death penalty for converting to Christianity confirmed that the translation was accurate. Distinguished Islamic historian Robert Spencer, author of 21 books on Islam, told church militant al Tayyib clearly teaches that those who leave Islam must be killed. This is in accord with traditional Islamic teaching. al Tayyib has shown no sign of moving toward the Christian position of the freedom of conscience and dignity of the human person. Only the Pope is moving in the other direction. <laughs> it's kind of like when they said, uh, you know, uh, people who practice same-sex relationships, they have gifts for the church, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, they have gifts to offer the church. You're like, oh, what are you talking about? Listen, this is clear, Jess. Yeah. Um, if what we teach about the, the faith is true, which is that, you know, uh, uh, that the the church in apostolic tradition, uh, as it moves through history, uh, you know, is in fact, uh, you know, uh, binding on all Catholics and cannot change. How can all of a sudden we change now? How can how can a modern pope now go against his predecessors and basically pull out his eraser and, uh, you know, the possibility of that happening is the possibility of God changing. <laughs> Paul, if I, if I had the ability to speak to Pope Francis, I would I would tell him respectfully that Islam believes that our Bible is corrupted. Number one, yep. Yep. is Islam. I would tell Pope Francis that Islam's believe that we worship three gods. They believe that we're polytheist. Yep. I would tell him that Islam, they do not believe that Jesus is divine. They think he was just a mere human being, just a, a prophet. Yep. I would tell him, if I could, uh, that, uh, that uh, again, uh, Islam has 109 verses that promote violence against the kafir. That's you and I. That's non-Muslims. Uh, and, and so, I mean, these are just basic things that I don't think anybody has told him. Here's something else very interesting. The Muslims, they talk about, the 99 names of Allah in the Quran. And many of the names of Allah are consistent with the Old and New Testament because, again, it just plagiarized Old and New Testament theology mixed with, with a lot of error from Muhammad. But if you look at the 90 name, 99 names of Allah in the Quran, he's never called love. And mm -hmm. in our Bible, God is called love. God is love. Mm -hmm. But the Quran, in the 99 names, it's very interesting that Allah is never called love. Mm, I'll never call father either. And, and, and father, love or father. Those are the two <laughs> names that are prohibited. <laughs> and the two are congruous. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, because that's exactly what a father does. A father gives love. Yes. And, Paul, and I'm going to tell you one of the things, uh, it just from, from a carnal man's point of view, I think one of the things that fuels uh, Islamic violence is the fact that, let's just be honest, the promise of 73, 73 virgin wives in paradise uh, to a secular humanist guy that all they think about is, you know, below the waist issues. Um, it's appealing. Yeah, that, that's that's a strong appeal. That's why a lot of them have no problem with suicide missions. They have no problem with their, you know, with engaging in, in, in acts of violence because for them to die in battle against the kafir, the infidel in the cause of Allah is the surest way to get to heaven. And there they're going to have carnal delights. They're going to have beautiful virgins. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, the Quran also says they will have little boys to enjoy sex with them as well. Not in the Quran. Really? This is, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to tell you, uh, you know, you talked about no one's ever told for, uh, Pope Francis about these things, Jess, I've noticed something about left wingers. They tend to, it's kind of like when Obama was the president, we had all the laws on the books, you know, on immigration and so forth. He just chose to ignore them. Hmm. You know, he had an agenda. He was focused on his agenda. And so he picked and choose, you know, what he would you pay attention to and what he wouldn't. So I, I think that this is a tendency that that is prevalent among people who are from the left in their in their thinking uh so i don't think it's a question of um 
you know, he hasn't heard these things. He just chooses to ignore it. And he has his focus on his goal and nothing else. And so nothing else matters. That's what I think. Paul, I mean, I, I wonder if Pope Francis, how could you ignore that the Quran specifically mentions that wife beating is normal? And the yeah. Quran specifically says that a husband could beat his wife and send her to bed. <laughs> How about uh, this one? How about this one? A woman, a wife is like a field. Plow her whatever which way you will. Wow. Wow. <laughs> which, which includes sodomy, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Plow her wherever you want. Well, that's the reference, brother. <laughs> yep. God help us. Jesus 911, two-man car. Remember. Jesus Christ is Lord, no matter what happens, no matter who's in political office. That's right. And remember, as St. Father Pio says, pray hope and don't worry. Worry is useless. God is merciful and God will hear your prayer. You can count on us here in Jesus 911. We're going to continue putting the spotlight of truth upon this culture of death. And we're going to keep firing missiles of truth against this wall of lies because we're called to be great saints. Don't miss the opportunity. And the only vax that we're going to push here is called the blood of Jesus. Amen. And the only virus we're afraid of is the virus of sin. See you next time.